Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. A, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. Today, we're joined by one of our very own Fit Father brothers, Tom Kalbasinski. He's 53 years young at the time of this recording, and boy, does he have a journey to share. Like many of our Fit Fathers, he's juggling work, family, and a big desire to lose weight. And I would say Tom's situation is particularly unique, and I'm not going to steal too much of the thunder of the conversation, but... There was a lot of tragedy that really spurred Tom to like look at himself in the mirror and decide that I need to make a change because tomorrow is not promised. So you get to hear about that and the interesting start of his story. And Tom went from the low 300s, around 315, and he's lost 80 pounds so far. And he did that largely during a time when there was the pandemic, the world's locked down, all that crap. Tom was able to really take charge of himself to create positive momentum, to break old patterns. And as Tom shares, like, this is a cynical guy. He's a guy that, like, tough to win over, very skeptical, very resistant at first. But now you're going to hear, I mean, Tom is just, like, all in. Fit father for life. His wife is in fit mother for life. And he's just really bought into this program because of all the transformation that it's given him. And because the way he did this was not perfect. There is no buy the exact book with this program. You don't have to necessarily weigh this or do that. Some weeks you might not even get the scheduled workouts in. And I think it's really cool to hear stories like Tom's where he's just able to navigate the different pressures with his unique work life. I mean, he's in different locations and still create great progress. He shares a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of funny stories and powerful moments in this conversation. So I recommend you watch it to the end. And also at the very end, uh, Tom grills me with a couple like kind of, I think, hilarious questions um, that are like off topic. He just like asked me about a few things of, that he was slightly peeved about. And if you watch to the end, you'll get to hear those. And it made me chuckle for sure. So Tom, listening to this, your transformation is remarkable. And I'm so glad that you chose to inspire our brotherhood with your story today, like so many fellow guys here on the podcast. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode with Fit Father Tom. All right, Tom, welcome officially to the Fit Father Project podcast, my friend. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks so much. It's so great to be here. So we're going to get into this right now, and I always love to kick it off with a little introduction of yourself. So please fill us in on your name, your age, where you're from, and anything you'd like to share about your work and your family. Okay. My name's Tom Kalbasinski. Um, I'm 53. I kind of, I guess I, you could say I'm from Casanova in New York, but I live in two places, live kind of a strange life because because of the work that I do. I'm currently a fish culturist, uh, the, a hatchery manager. I run the largest fish hatchery that New York State owns. And uh, in, in having to do that, uh, I have to live on site. And uh, when I took this job, I um, I, I couldn't, uh, I have to live on site. And I, I had two girls that were, that were um, in high school, and I wasn't dumb enough to take uh, kids getting uh, straight A's and yank them out of school. And they're only yeah. about an hour away. So I have a, a lovely wife, Julie, who's also a, foot, a fit mother. And uh, and uh, somehow she was crazy enough to take my last name and then teach little children. Um, so uh, And then I have uh, uh, two daughters, Emily and Catherine. And uh, they're just about all grown up. So That's awesome. I mean, I, I definitely a full life. That you do have. Yeah. And I mean, now I, I, I mentioned this before we actually hit record that I have a soft spot. So everything related to game and fish, like I love to get outside. I love to fly fish for trout and like, what's it actually like on a day-to-day basis man- being a fish culturist and like managing a hatchery is like, are you overseeing the growing of like thousands of little fish or like what's, what does it actually look like? Yeah. Well, I, I'm responsible for all the salmon that New York state uh, all the Pacific salmon that New York State grazes and grow and, and stocks into uh, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario and and all the steel have the the uh, the rainbow rain, the migratory rainbow trout. Cool. So typically uh, we we take about five million eggs a year and we raise about three to four million fish and uh, sock them various ways and we're we're our, our place never never stops. Uh, we don't ever have a break where there's no fish. Um, there's always fish going somewhere. Uh, we do some really cool things. We we stock some fish out on uh, on an old war, World War II uh, landing craft. We drive the trucks right onto the tr- on the thing one at a time and, and cool. drive them out into the lake. And that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, some neat stuff. And uh, and um, we also take a, we have our hatchery is the only hatchery that does that takes the, the all of the the broodstock the adult salmon come right to our hatchery and they come right into the facility and we. 
and we handle all these big fish. So we do a lot of handling of really neat stuff. So if you like to touch fish, that's <laughs> the way it is. So uh, when I, when I, uh, cool. when I interview uh, prospective employees, I, one of the things that I always tell them about fish hatchery work and fish culture is that you don't get to walk away. Sometimes you have really tough days and you don't get to throw your hands up and walk away. You know, the fish are priority. So we, it can be a real frustrating uh, life sometimes when you just don't get a break. Sometimes things get really hard, but uh, for the most part, it's really cool. We support a huge uh, sport fishery in the Great Lakes and, uh, and uh, the fishermen really, really appreciate that. So, and once in a while, once in a while, they let me go fishing too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I bet it's one of those things when you work like in the industry, I'm sure you don't fish often. You're just handling fish all the time. So, Makes sense. Um, all right. So take us back to how you found about, about the fit father program. What was motivating you, even how heavy you were at the time? Like what was the stage of your fit father journey? The beginning, the beginning pits of, of where you were at. I was always a heavy, I was a heavy kid growing up. I was a heavy guy. Uh, I had a little bit of a stint, uh, tried a few things when my kids were born, I worked pretty hard and I lost a little bit of weight, but I was always really heavy. Uh, my family was, you know, I had I was half Italian and half Polish. They everywhere you went, you went to, if, no matter who's which grandma you went to, they said, you know, did you eat? Did you eat? You know, so uh, you know what I mean. Um, but uh, I, I was I had to I, I I blew my back out when I was about twenty one, twenty two on a, on a job, and um, from then on it was really tough. You know, it was really hard to to exercise. It was hard to do anything, and um, I had some pretty I had some tough life circumstances that happened uh, i'm going to say about doesn't, doesn't really matter the timeline completely but 10 years ago 11 years ago um i was we were i was a group of three guys the three of us were like you know my guys they were my, my best friends and uh, you know we were at each other's weddings and everything and uh, we were all about the same age we were all about 45 so um they were like a, maybe a year older than me but um so in one year, I lost my, my, one of my good friends just, uh, just helped his mom shovel her roof off, went home that night and, uh, died of a cardiac myopathy, just died 45, boom, that never saw it coming. None of us saw it coming. Um, and if, and if that was really, really hard and, uh, what was really hard about the whole, the whole, that, that, that whole situation was about two and a half months later, the other guy died of a massive heart attack. Wow. So I lost both my best friends in the span of about three months at the age of 45. That's crazy. Yeah. And in between there, I had a farmer friend of mine who was kind of a father figure who had cancer and died. So I was really, I'd been, I was struggling for, for forever. You know, I mean, it was, uh, the rock, you know, really tough. It was, uh, you know, of course you don't, feel like even getting out of bed in the morning, you know what I mean? And it's just really, really hard. Um, and one of the things that people don't get when you lose a friend is that, you know, lots of people lost their dads and their brothers and their sons and their all that stuff. I, I just lost my buddies. Yeah. And so they kind of don't get it and they don't kind of, you know, you got to get set off to the side, you know? So, oh, it's, so it, true. Was, it was, it was just tough. It was really tough. And, uh, for a long time, you know, all the things, the, the stress eating and that, yeah, you just, you just don't, and you kind of feel like, I guess I kind of felt like in a lot of ways, you sort of have uh, survivor's guilt, you know, like what the heck did I, what am I doing? That's not only do you have this guilt that you also wake up every day thinking, feeling like you're going to die. You don't really know what, don't, yes. what did they do? What am I doing differently? I did everything that they did and I'm still here. And then something's, you know, w w waiting for the ax to fall basically. And I spent a lot of years just kind of going through the motions, just kind of going through. If I didn't have my wife and kids, I don't think I probably would have, you know, I wouldn't have probably made it through because I didn't have a real big reason to, to, to go through because, I mean, I was alone for a long time. And you can't make those relationships back up at, at that point. It's really hard to make friends after you that old. So that was a really tough time for me. And it was okay. It went on for, you know, like I said, a long time. And I just, you know, I gained more and more weight. I had back more and more back problems. Uh, my job back then was at a different fish hatchery, a, a sort of a different style fish hatchery that was more of a, 
it's, you know, don't work really hard for six months out of the year and then work like a maniac for six months out of the year, which is the worst possible kind of situation you could ever do for a body, you know? And even though I was active outside and stuff and did and hunted and fished and stuff, it was, it wasn't, a, it was just not a, an active lifestyle. And basically I hurt myself every spring when everything, you know, and, 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 and then spend the rest of the summer nursing myself back to health. So that was a real challenge. And I was about, I think I was about 315 at my highest, maybe a little bit more than that. And um, what really was the final straw for me was that um, I fell out of a tree, putting a tree stand in, and probably should have died. Don't know why I didn't get hurt worse. I hurt my foot really, really bad. You know, it uh, didn't break anything, but it's like, ripped everything apart in my in my foot and made a big mess and and it wasn't like it was to the point where they were going to put surgery but what they wanted to do was screw all the bones together and the guy said well we can either you can either lose some weight or you can screw all the bones together and the idea of that was just like wow that's it you know this is it like this is this is and i mean my back was so bad i'd been to i'd done the, the shots and done all the all the uh i'd done the pain management and I was kind of at that point where it was like, my pain management guy was like, well, if you're having trouble sitting, then maybe you should just kneel. Maybe you should quit your job. Maybe you can do all these, you know, do, and I was just like, wow, this is not, I'm not old enough to be this old. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just not, I just, I felt like I was just, I felt like garbage and I was, I was incapacitated in so many ways and I was fighting it, but I wasn't having much success because I don't think I ever had a really solid path. You know, that's what I was always looking for and uh, so grateful for, for, for you and for this, this program to provide that path, uh, that was just, that's just so transformative and it's just so awesome. Just so awesome. So I got to ask you, I mean, what, what a stage is set? Like that's tremendous physical, emotional yeah. adversity and like a real serious wake up call. And it is kind of crazy that you are here now on the other side of this, having been so successful, still alive, new lease on life. Like, how did you even come across Fit Father? Like, did it pop up somewhere? Like, w- w- I have to say, you are one persistent son of a gun, and I you kept popping up all over the place. And I knew I wanted to do something, and I I didn't know, and I I'm not a Facebook guy, so I wasn't on Facebook. I haven't gotten the the reason I'm on Facebook now is because of Fit Father. That's really all I do. If you go to my Facebook Facebook page, there's nothing on there. It's, yeah. it's just I I just go to to, to to Fit Father Project. Um, I'm getting a little more into it, but not really. But anyway, um, you just showed up on YouTube stuff. And then my algorithm just kind of kept guiding me in your direction. And yeah, my wife and I, we were, in fact, we were, you know, we were talking about that. You know, I was telling her about what, what we're doing here today. And we were talking about it. And I said, how did I, you know, I'm trying to think, how did I get here? How did I? And she said, well, we talked about it, you know, and we had both been struggling. She's got, you know, my, my family's heavy and, and um, we're always, we've always struggled with, with weight. And I said, geez, we got to do something. Let's do something together. And I said, what about this? And, and she fought me on this. Like she did. She was, you know, and I, I mean, she reminded me that the day we sat down and did our, our mission statements together was so emotional for me. It was, it was terrible. I mean, I was a mess. I just fought it and just, oh, I didn't want to do it. And it was just so hard. And we helped each other through it and I, I came up with it and, uh, and it was, it's, it was so transformative and it was just, you know, you, you, you get past that hurdle. I think that's happens on every level yeah. uh, when you do this until a certain point and you kind of like embrace the change, you know yeah. what I mean? So when you're sitting down with that mission statement, like what about that was so painful for you? Was it realizations I, or just the resistance yeah, to maybe, even want to yeah, do Yeah, I don't stuff? know. The, the embarrassment that I've gone that far. Yeah. The the shame that I was as big as I was and I couldn't even get out of my own way. Uh, there's, a, there's a really nice, uh, there's a, there's a, one of my friends and who also lost her husband uh, during that same time, uh, who was also a friend of mine, who is a lady that has some property that I hunt on and we, they hunted, I hunted on the family. Actually, I met them because my wife taught their kids and that's how we got to know each other. And they have this beautiful hill that's just a great challenge to climb. And that's where I fell out of the tree. It was on her hill. And um, I had to climb that hill with two sticks, one in each hand, like walking sticks. And I was like, what am I doing? 
And I can tell you now, I climbed that hill like Tinkerbell. I mean, I'm up that hill like, man, it's awesome. And, uh, and you know, that, that, that transformation is just, it's just amazing. And my, having the ability to do it with your spouse too, is just awesome. Yeah. That is a really unique and powerful aspect you guys do have. And I want to ask you just so we can kind of describe where you're at now, how much weight have you lost? How much weight has your wife lost? Like what, what's the, what's the, yeah, what's the number of transformation that's happened? And then I want to get into the beginning month or so and like getting up and going on the program and we'll talk about that period. But first, like, where are you at today? I mean, you're climbing the hill easily. Like how much weight have you yeah. released off your body? Well, from three, I'm, I'm at, uh, this morning I was 236. Wow. From like three, from the 300, 310. From like, three, from like 315. Yeah. 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 So about 80 pounds. Yeah. So, um, so that was really, you know, that's really cool. Uh, I'm not done. That's for sure. What I failed to mention is that, uh, one of the, I, I ended up last spring, I ended up getting, I got sick. I got, uh, microscopic colitis and I had to, we had to figure out what that was. Yeah. And so I fought my way through that and I'm through that. We figured it out we treated it and it's, and I'm all better from that. But that really rocked my world when I was in the middle of this. I think I would be even better when I if I didn't have to deal with that that problem. But uh, yeah, my, my wife had, had dropped initially dropped about twenty five or thirty pounds, and um, it's a little harder for the ladies. But she struggled through it, and uh, well, she again she was really has been struggling with taking care of her mom, and uh, her mom has had some good news. She had some surgery, and she went through a, a round of chemo, and she's and she's doing better. Her numbers are down. And they think she's doing it. You know, they're they're going to do watch her and make sure that uh, it's not back. But uh, my wife is finding some time now to to, to put in for herself. So um, she actually just did her first MRT workout in about six months yesterday, and she sent me a picture of her and she said, "I feel like I'm going to die," <laughs> and she didn't. And I gave her lots of kudos for uh-huh. that. So uh, uh, so it's, it's it's really cool. So um, yeah, you know those first. Those first ones, you, you know, you, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard to, but I, I would say the, you know, I, I just went after it. I was scared to death that my back wasn't going to hold up. Mm-hmm. And that was what my big fear was. And I even wrote it in my, when in, I have a journal that I, it's not so much a journal, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's basically just a weight uh, every day. I weigh, I weigh myself every morning, um, good or bad. Um, if I can, if I remember to, you know, uh, I travel a lot. So sometimes I'm like, Oh, the, the, the journal's in the wrong place. It's not where I am, but, uh, yeah. I usually all fill it in afterwards. I'll put it in my phone or something. But, um, I wrote in the journal when I was getting started, you know, day one and all that stuff. Um, and I, and I just wrote in there, my concern that I was really concerned that I was going to just make it worse, you know, make my back worse. And, um, Along those same lines, I see a chiropractor on a regular basis. He's been a, a, a godsend. He's kept me working, kept me walking, kept me kept me going. He's also a, a hunter and a fisherman. So sometimes I have to go, hey, you know, uh, we're going to work on this today. We're not talking about deer hunting and turkey hunting. Uh, but uh, but he, um, he, I would say, has been my strongest supporter, the most supporting supportive person in my life besides my wife and kids Mm -hmm. he thought what we what i did and what i'm doing he thinks that that is the just the most wonderful thing ever and i mean for a while there when i was dropping away i think he was more excited than i was i mean i would go in to see him and he was just like who is this guy this is i don't even know this guy you know he's you know he's just so excited to and you know he's still but all the adjustments that he did on me or could do on me, don't talk about NSVs. Yeah. He would he would push on my back, but it used to go crunch and pop and snap and do all these things. And he goes, I can't get it to move. It's 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 rock solid. You're you're doing great. You know what I mean? So what a what a great support. What a great, you know, what a great guy to have on your side when you're, you know, going to visit a doctor. Usually there, you know, it's always a little bit of a bad news. And this guy is he's just, just so awesome. I just love him. I wish I could go to him for everything else, but he's a chiropractor, you know. Yeah. I mean, so but I mean, that's, that's a really valuable lesson, right? I mean, you got the support team you had around you. So cool that you had your wife, but also like knowing that you had this, I guess you can call it a f- apprehension or a fear about your back and you had someone to help support you and at least like know that if something was going to happen, they could help guide you back on and help bulletproof you. And then as you know, you got stronger with the workouts, back and core becomes a lot stronger. So Take me through how much you've transformed with the exercise from like when you started. I mean, exercising in the 300s is not fun, right? And then no. let alone when you're now. So especially now speaking to the big guys listening, 
How's it changed? What was it like early? What's it like middle? What's it like now? Let's talk about the workout aspect. If you're going to your knees, you just expect it. It's going to happen. I mean, I, when I started out, I was doing half the, half the apex on my knees and it yeah. was like, wow, I don't think I can do this. I don't know if I can do this or just, just soaping the floor with sweat and just, and you, 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 you know, like, but I, but I, I just kept showing up. I just kept doing it. And it was amazing how quickly, how my strength built up and how I started to feel stronger and I started to do, and then, and, and the day that you get off your knees and it's not that very, very far from when you start, I don't know. I, I can't tell you exactly when it happened, you know, um, but the day that you get off your knees and do that apex 10 and get, yeah, those all done on your toes is just just a, a fantastic feeling of satisfaction. It's yeah. it's uh, it's awesome, and and that's the thing. I think fear is this the, the biggest issue. Is everybody's af- we're afraid of the change. You know what I mean? We're afraid of all that. We're we're embarrassed. We're afraid, and you know. So I did personally. I didn't try. You know, there are some folks out there that try all the different things, and it's difficult to do. I did not do that. I did. I have tried a couple of things, but nothing. I, I didn't try the Weight Watchers and all the other things. I didn't do that. I haven't done that. So I didn't fail at all the other stuff. And then I just figured, oh, I can, I'm going to fail at this too. But I did fail at things and I've, you know, I failed at a lot of stuff. But your, your program is, is, I just, when you, when you hear, when you hear you talk about it, when you hear the other members talk about it, it just, there's no way you're lying. There's no, if you see the transformations, I'm about the most cynical person you're ever going to meet in your life. Okay. And it's tough for me. It really is. Um, I don't do the, I, I struggle with, I struggle with that kind of stuff. And so yeah. for me to be able to, to dig into this and to believe in this and to have success in this says a lot about this program. I mean, this is, it's, it's awesome. And then, to add add the coaching on top of that, and I think that is the most important part, at least for me, is being able to to have support, even if it's somebody to tell a story to once in a while and yeah. get somebody to relate to. And that's what you know, because family's great, but not all my family was supportive, and um, or or at least not all my you know extended family was supportive. Some folks are like not real happy that you you you're having success. You know what I mean? But uh, having that, that coaching and having, I mean, you you really do have so much support and so much information. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming for a guy like me who doesn't have a lot of time to, you know, in between, but I just, it's great that it's there and you can use it anytime. And, and, uh, it's, re- it's really the foundational for, for, for keeping yourself going, I think. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, um, I mean, it seems that, if we don't have those support in certain areas, it's easy for the mind to view those as like obstacles then to quit. But like when you have all those holes, potential holes plugged up with good people, with resources and all that, it just gets you to stay afloat long enough where you're like, actually, it's kind of fun floating. It's actually kind of fun sailing. And then you're starting to get the the turnover, like you said, where you're no longer on your knees or nutrition's dialed in, you're feeling a lot better. So in the spirit of your busy life and not having a ton of time and knowing that nutrition was probably one of the biggest changes you made outside exercise, let's get into that. Like what worked for you in relation to the fit father meal plan? What did you learn about nutrition? What did you realize was like BS that you'd been following or bad habits that you broke? Let's just talk about the whole eating aspect of this plan for you. Well, I never would have ever guessed that I would uh, be a shake guy, that morning shake. And my wife had done things before with, I don't know, kale shakes or something. That's yeah. Cool. yeah, that's, well, um, it was like, why don't you just go out and nibble on the lawn? It didn't, it didn't you know, it's just never, I, and I was like, wow, this is, boy, this is not me. This, But I do, I am a veggie guy. I do eat lots of veggies. And I never would have guessed that. And when I, when I started doing the shake, now I prefer the shake. I love the shake. I, I, that was one of the hardest things when I had colitis is that we just couldn't figure out what it was. And so first we thought it was, the creatine that we thought was like uh lactose intolerance. So I was really getting really struggling for about six months. Cause I just couldn't fit, put my finger on what was wrong with it. It really broke my heart because I love the shakes. You know, um, I love the, I love the perfect plate. I think it's awesome that it can be, it's so, it's so simple, but it's, yeah. but it's also, there's so, so many options yeah. that you, if you could play around and do stuff. And uh, I think folks get kind of hung up on 
it absolutely has to be this way every single time or and uh, I'm not not a big uh, bread guy anyway so I don't even really I I got I've got a loaf of Ezekiel bread in the freezer that's been there for two months I don't even it's a pain to, to thaw it out I, I eat it it's okay it's, I just don't have I'm doing phase I'm doing phase two now and that's one thing I got to mention is that I probably I know everybody says this but I probably am the the worst guy as far as doing it it's just quench your order the way the way you're supposed to do it I I, I do the best that I can and I, I'm not the guy I'm always amazed at some of the folks that are like uh, weighing out every every portion and they have everything. I was like, man, I don't do anything that way. Mostly because of my lifestyle. I'm on call. I'm, my phone is in my pocket. I, I don't know what's going to happen in Fish Central. And I'm literally, I can look down the, hop, the, the hill from here and see it. It never goes away. It's in my back pocket every single day. And so I have to be ready to just tuck and run. Yep. And so I just kind of do the best that I can with with all the directions you have. And if I have questions, I can ask them. And I think folks get maybe sometimes too caught up in that this there has to be this this absolute rock solid rule that you can or cannot do. You know, it's kind of like growing a garden. People go, oh, "Well, can you grow?" It's like you can grow anything you want. It's your garden. The police aren't going to come and take your tomatoes away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you could, you know, yeah, like 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 uh, Shane Dixon says, you can do anything you want as long as you are willing to pay the consequences. There's some guys that I have friends of, for our friends that I've always said, you know, you would be a great candidate for this, except you drink too much beer. You really love your beer. And then, and I know that guys that have these special things that they really love that really are in the program. It's like, man, that would be a real challenge for you. So, you know, I, I'd support you any way I could, but I know that's be even harder than just going. Yeah, you know, I don't drink at all. Mm-hmm. Mostly because I worked for a, a, an alcoholic for twenty years, so I don't have to worry. About, I don't worry about that stuff. It's, 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 I don't find it amusing, and I don't find it uh, 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 fun at all. None of it. So, yeah, um, it, that was an easy, an easy uh, loss for me. I just didn't even worry. I don't even worry about that anymore. I love the the ease of the perfect plate. I love the fact that I can do a steak. It, it's it's great. Um, I love. I I I never thought I would be as fond of. The, the fasting as I am being a, I've kind of a, you know, I'm married, but I'm a single guy. I live here by myself most of the time. So I, if, if somebody makes dishes, is this the same guy who's got to wash them? <laughs> and, uh, and, or, you know, and I cook, I cook all my own meals. I don't, I don't eat out. Um, but I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere here in, in, in central Northern New York. But, um, I love the idea that, that I can, I can eat what I want as long as it's you know reasonable. I eat super duper clean, and it's. I, I did notice like the last few weeks, there's some folks that have posted stuff about sugar and about sweet drinks and stuff like that. I don't drink soda. I haven't drank soda in two years. I haven't really had refined sugar in two years. I mean, once in a while, if I go to a party or you know you have a little piece of cake or something, but I don't have yeah. And everything tastes so much better. It's amazing to me. I was telling. I posted something the other day. I was. A lot of times I'll make like some, 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 uh, like a, a sliced, uh, pepper, a couple of different, different colored peppers, slice them up, a uh, big Vidalia onion, the big strips, and I'll grill that. And then I'll mix that with some steamed, uh, cauliflower. I like that dish. It's yeah. just a good, you know, and it, it makes a lot too. So you can have it for a couple of days in a row. Yeah. And I'm cutting the stuff up and usually I'm snacking on, I'll be snacking on raw pepper. I like that a lot. It's good. I'm a raw veggie guy. I used to, my mother used to always pick them. He still does it when I was a baby, a little kid. I used to get upset when I was uh, when I didn't get a purple cabbage in the, in the grocery store. So you know, I, I do eat a lot of veggies. So that's kind of this this program was kind of not that big of a stretch for me to go to. But yeah, but I'm sitting there cooking the, or cutting up these veggies the other day, and I realized I'm snacking on raw Vidalia onion, and it doesn't taste like it's it tastes like it's a sweet crunchy onion. I'm like, wow, that's just amazing that this stuff tastes so much different, and I, I think that's really something that folks don't think about and they don't they don't, how when you get to eat and clean on uh, apple or some blueberries or some strawberries are this sumptuous yeah snack in fact i've you know, i talked to cat as much as i possibly can and she's so awesome and she's so supportive and she's so helpful and she a couple times she said yeah you know you want to lay off the fruit a little bit there you know it's just because i'm like wow i got this thing i'm all by myself that's the thing about the fasting is that when I'm by myself, I find it to be kind of a challenge because if I'm going to fast for a day 
and I'm going to carb cycle for a day, it's kind of hard to buy groceries for one guy. Right. You don't know, you know, you don't know what to get. So yeah, it's a struggle. Sometimes I end up with kind of high, high, high amounts of groceries and low amounts of groceries. <laughs> uh, but that's still, no, that's the balance you got to find. You know, yeah. you got, you got to do that. And, and, uh, and th the beauty part about that is that when you're having those kind of issues, you can throw that out there to the group. There's always somebody that's got some good advice. If you, if, you know, you, you can, you can talk to Kat, you can talk to Ben, anybody can, they'll, they'll, they'll help. Everybody helps. And it's, it's invaluable. It's, yeah, it's your safety net. So I, I, I love that part of the program. I haven't done like the, I, I wanted to, the 48 hour fast or the, or the, or the, you know, I know you talk a lot about the, the, the longer fast. Yeah. I haven't done that, but I can say that there's, there are fasting days when I really question why we eat at all. It's like, it's so light. It's so nice. It's like, yeah. I don't know why I would eat at all. You know, although I do look forward to, to yeah. the dinner uh, a lot of times, you know, but I, I have not done this picture perfect. And, and I don't, it seems to me that you designed it that way. Yeah. Am I wrong with that? No, like, you're that's kinda... Good is good enough when it comes to this. Good, good and consistency is, is exactly what we need, you know? So and, you're totally uh, right. you know, you, you, you preach that stuff about how, you know, something is better than nothing. And that is so true. I mean, I had some issues with my shoulder lately. I've been walking at work. We, we, we walk at lunchtime a lot of times. I got a pretty good sized place here so we can walk for 20 minutes around the, around the horn. And, and yep. we do that. I drive my bicycle back and forth to work, which is nice. all downhill. So it's only really one way <laughs> uh, when, you, you know, uh, but, uh, but um, that little, I've, I'm still losing weight. I'm still doing, doing better. You know, and I'm not even, I, I have been working back into the, into the workhouse uh, this past uh, week and a half. But before that, I was, I was just walking and just doing, and doing something that's it's better than nothing. And that's, Heck yeah. it, it, you, 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 you check the boxes and you, you still feel good about yourself. You know, yes. You're not feeling guilty. You know, and and I, I talked to Kat about that and I was like, well, I, I feel guilty, you know? And, she, and then I, about two days later, I, I lost like a pound and a half. I was down a pound and a half and I was like, She's like, you got to let that guilt go. You got to let that go because you're still moving in the right direction. Yeah. You got to give yourself grace. And that's what I've learned. That's one of the most important things I've learned from from your program, from this program, from our program, I guess now since I'm a fit father for life, yep. is that you got to give yourself some grace and don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Hey, it's Dr. Ray. I want to quickly pause this episode to thank you for listening to this Fit Father podcast. I am just blown away at how amazing this podcast has become. I had no idea when I started the FFP around 10 years ago that it would grow into such an impactful mission. And I wanna let you know that I am so grateful to be connected to you in this lifetime. And on behalf of me and my entire team, we are so grateful to be in your life, helping you get and stay healthier for your family. That's what I wanna share. Just some gratitude from my heart to yours. Let's get back to today's episode. Yeah, it's so true. What, what brilliant advice and I think it almost takes somebody going through this journey to really know that in their own direct experience. Cause when you're starting out, you just, you, you have that can be that energy, maybe anxiety, you want things to be perfect. And I guess it just takes time where you navigate a shoulder setback and you still lose weight by walking or you're consistent enough and you see the actions of that, the results of your actions enough time, but it's really good that you're bringing this to, especially the newbie guys awareness that, man, check the boxes. And then the internal check-in that you mentioned, are you feeling guilty? Or are you feeling like some sense of accomplishment? And if you're more days than not, you're feeling like a good sense of accomplishment by checking boxes, that internal state is going to carry on to more positive momentum. And the internal state of guilt just drags you back down. So you're managing that really well. I want to ask you too about some non-scale victories. Any stories as you've gotten through here, like whether it's, you know, your girls seeing you or, or like hearing about your success, people at work, um, you know, anything in general. I mean, I, I see you walking up the hill. Now you describe yourself as like almost like Tinkerbell, like flying up the hill versus the sticks. And that's definitely an NSV. Can you share some stories with us on, on some of those? Well, I, this, 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 uh, this past year I, I hunt and I fish a lot. Okay. So, but one of the things I started pl playing around with this year was, is, is this thing called the tree saddle. I hunt, I hunt with traditional archery for deer. So, um, I shoot, I shoot what's called, uh, you know, uh, I shoot a recurve bow, a stick bow. There's no sights on it or anything, you know. And one of the things that I play around with this year, I've always wanted to do, but I haven't felt like I was light enough to do it, is this tree saddle. And uh, last year, my wife was nice enough to let me buy the whole the whole kit and caboodle. And I hunted last year out of a tree saddle for the first time. It's really cool. It's kind of a hybrid lineman saddle. And you're, you climb a tree uh, just 
every time you hunt, you kind of get hunting into a different place. It's very mobile. It's very lightweight, and you're on, you know, and you're able to go wherever you want to go. And uh, and and it, I didn't feel like I was overwhelming the sit. You know, it wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't. So that was re- really cool and nice. really fun for me to do that. I didn't shoot any deer with it, but it was a lot of fun. And yeah. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it again. I've had innumerable MSVs. Uh, just of late, it's kind of interesting. My my bike had been sitting for a while, and I hadn't used it. My my uh, uh, you know just regular bicycle. And my maintenance guy is uh, is, is great. He can fix anything and everything. And I said, "Hey, can you take a look at the shifter? It's not shifting right." And, and, and he said, "Sure." So he went and looked, looked, they took a look at it, and he and then the next day he said, "That's all set. I'll I'll good to go." And so I have to go. Like I said, I have to go up the hill to go home, and that was the problem. You couldn't downshift with it. It was sucking like sixth gear, you know. And I, so I was like, so I drove back and forth to work about four times, and he said, "How?" And then he said to me, "Hey, how's it shifting?" And I said, "You know, I don't know." And he said. What do you mean you don't know? I said, I haven't had to shift. <laughs> I drove up and down the hill in like six gears. Yeah. And I know that like, I, then I had, to, I, had to, I, had to, I had to make a point to downshift just to see if it worked. Cause I didn't have any issues whatsoever. Nice. Riding up that hill, you know? And so I, and there's so many things like that, that, I mean, I do, I have two sets of stairs that I have to go from the, the main hatchery floor up to the office, like nothing to it. When I fell out of the tree, after that, I had to have a lot of PTE. I had to have, I ended up wearing a brace on my foot. I wear, I wore a brace for almost three years on, on every day, every day. Well, about three weeks ago, the brace started bothering me. So I took it off and I haven't worn it since. Nice. I felt like, uh, I don't know, uh, Forrest Gump. I was like, Put on a new pair, uh, a new pair of hiking boots, and I haven't looked back since. And uh, <laughs> so I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not positive that I'm never going to wear it again. But right now, it hasn't been an issue, and uh, and that's pretty cool. That's you know? awesome. Um, you know, like I said, I, I, all my clothes are different. I have no idea whose shirt this is. I, I don't even, I don't even know. I have to, I have to apologize that I, I'm not representing today. I represent. I have sweatshirts and stuff, but the 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 t-shirt that I bought when I started. This is way too big. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to gift it to one of the other fifth fathers. So That's a good idea <laughs> because I don't have. Yeah, I, I just haven't gotten around to order something. I got to do that. But um, just just tons of, of 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 great things. You know, stories that I, I, people have noticed, and you go places, and people don't. I I went to a party a couple of, of months ago. I think it was Memorial Day there, and and uh, we were throwing horseshoes, and the, the the guy who hosted the party, who's a, a guy I've known for twenty years. Kept my name's Tom. He kept calling me Eric, and I was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I can't even tell who you are from the back. I don't even know who you are. Like, I don't even know. You know what I mean?" It's, and so there's so many things like that to happen on a daily basis. You know, uh, that's that are it's so awesome. You know, going up that hill. I hunt turkeys at this place too, and this year I had to sneak around do the sneak around on the turkey that was out in the open that we were. I was going to try to get around ahead of. Well, he was kind of walking uphill, and I, I caught myself at the top of the hill as I crested the top of the hill, which is like a thousand yards straight up hill. And I got to the top of the hill and I said, I'm not even sweating. <laughs> it, it's, and that's what I, I find, you know, it's, yeah. it's, just, it's just amazing to me. I just, you know, I, and I, one thing though that I will say, and I talked to Cat about this, we've had conversations about it, is, is that as good as it is, I still see the fat guy in the mirror. And that's a, I think that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and um, I do occasionally catch myself kind of hesitating to do something, and then I tell you, "Wait a minute, you can do that. That's all. Yeah, that's all we deal for you. You can do that." You know, I mean, uh, my 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 crew that that's here at the place, we have a big uh, sprawling grounds, and they pretty much banned me from ever using a pole saw again because I always leave them with their tongues hanging out and they're sweating their brains out because I'm over there chopping away, cutting limbs in front, you know, and and they're like, "Now break that thing. We don't ever want him to use that again." So and I, and I love that. And I love that, that, that I could keep up with the kids. Cause I got a bunch of kids. They're all young kids. And I love that. I love that. That's awesome. You know what I mean? And, and it I'm, is. I'm, I'm two years from retiring if I, if I want to go. And uh, I am looking forward to that So Uh, you know, we, we, uh, I, uh, I don't know if, if you looked at the pictures I sent, but yeah. Um, one of the things that I would encourage every fit father to do, I think so many of us, one of the traps that we fell into, and it's not necessarily our fault because it might be maybe our parents' fault, but um, 
we, our generation or my generation anyway, we seem to find a reason to eat no matter what it was. You know, you eat when you're happy, you eat when you're sad, you eat when it's Tuesday, you eat when it's Thanksgiving, you eat when it's Christmas, you eat when it's your birthday, you eat when it's somebody else's birthday. You know what I mean? You eat whenever you, you know, because it's always, you know, you're kind of like, really like food. And so when you hit those milestones, try really hard not to use food as your as your reward. Yeah. And I, I've tried really hard not to do that. In fact, uh, maybe you might have seen, I might have posted, I might have, I think I posted it. When I, I went to, I, I decided that when I got down to 250, which was a pretty, it's a pretty decent milestone, you know, for weight. I was going to go on a, an offshore fishing trip with a, an outfit that I had always wanted to go on that was maybe a little more expensive than I would normally pay for. And uh, I went and did that with some friends, and that was the coolest thing ever. Like, that nice. was the, the most awesome thing ever. Uh, it was really cool. And we had a lot of fun, and we caught some fish and everything. But, the, but the, the ability to be able to do that and not, you know, to fight those big tunas and to do all that stuff and, and, and be healthy and, and, and not be out of, out of breath and winded and have to sit down that's all part of it. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about your abilities, right? The, the reward you get from your physical abilities to do this cool stuff, whether it's up in the tree or, you know, chopping the poles or riding the bike or catching tuna, like that's a reward in itself. But what you said was brilliant is like not going back to those same old coping patterns or not going back to the same old mental circuit of food is the reward because you're reinforcing that pattern. And quite frankly, what you shared about you know, seeing the fat guy in the mirror, that's just a mental pattern that's, you know, you developed over 40 plus years, right? And like, it's going to take time and you're whittling away at that all the time by observing that thought and then being like, oh, wait, actually, this is a new version of me and I can. And over time, that's rewiring and, and making sure that we're wiring in the direction that we want to be and not going backwards. So that's brilliant. And hey, why not do experiences, right? You said just like, Gift yourself the experience of something awesome you want to do because that's a memory. We forget about how good that steak was or the cake or whatever it was. Like you have the meal, but like the next day your stomach hurts and like, you don't remember how good it tasted. Like it's gone. But I'm sure you'll talk about that tuna trip for a good long while. Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I had a conversation today with a friend of mine who who is kind of in the same boat as I am as far as he's the same age as I am, and uh, he's. He's a, a, a great candidate. He's, he's a heavy guy, but he's a great friend of mine. And uh, and we were talking, and he said, "Well, don't tell anybody." But I, I've tried to get him to, to do it, and he just well, he gets to the edge, and he if he won't, I I don't I don't know what I can say to to get him to, to go. Is I tell him I'll help him any way I can, and he's like, "Yeah, don't tell anybody." But I kind of had a stroke. I'm like, well, how do you kind of have a stroke? But anyway, I'm you, know, yeah. you think you have time to solve these problems, and you don't, and that's the that's the thing, you know. So. And and he's he was the fellow that likes to drink his beer. You know, he likes to, he likes to drink beer. And it's like, well, you know what? You gotta you gotta decide what what you want to be. You want to be, you know, and 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 uh, that I think it's just it's it's fear. It's it's being af- afraid of change. Nobody know, you don't know what to do. You don't know how you're going to react to things. And again, it's hard to imagine. It was hard for me to imagine. Not. Be in, you know, to, to be able to, I, I really didn't believe that I could do it either. To be, be honest, you know, what I mean, that, and that's what's so great about the persistent Doctor A that showed up in my in my phone over and over again, and and the guys and the guys that you, that, that, you, that do these podcasts and to do the interviews, you know, uh, you know, you look at uh, Werner Mueller, yeah. and it's like, my God, if he can do it, you know, like that, I, it's it's not, you know, it's 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 possible, and it yeah. is possible, and that's that's the greatest part about it, you know. Yeah, you know, going going back, circling back to the, the you know, and you don't even have to do an experience. You can you can just not not do food. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Like you could do weights, and you could do a, a new bicycle, or you could do any a new hat, a shirt, anything. Yeah. And 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 that's kind of what I've I've really tried to do of lately, especially because you just you don't want to go back to those, and it's it's hard to see. I think from a, from my perspective, you know, looking back as my perspective over the years, it's like, yeah, you don't really, it just doesn't seem like it's a big deal. I was having a conversation with, with uh, uh, one of the guys that works with me and we talk, we're talking about soft drinks and he, it just, well, he goes, well, I just drink Pepsi. You know, just Pepsi. It's like, yeah, uh, that Pepsi's killing you, buddy. For sure. You know, and it's like, and you, and it's, it, it doesn't seem like when you say that it seems outlandish, but it's true, you know, and we're just kind of, you know, I, I've had, 
friends that they, I couldn't do it. I, I drink, I like my sweets. It's like, yeah, well, you weren't born drinking sweets and, you, and you'll be okay. My kids always hate me when I tell them this, but I'm constantly telling them, it's not what you like, it's what you're used to. Yeah. And it's true. It's true. It really is true. You, you know, it, it, changing your habits can really suck. But if you change your, your, your outlook and you embrace the suck, it doesn't really take that long for you to kind of forget what it was like. Totally. And growth. And, and what is more fulfilling on the deepest level than like growth and improvement and feeling like you're living in accordance with what you believe is the better, healthier, more well path. I mean, like that's like gives you fulfillment beyond the senses, beyond the taste, beyond the whatever. It's like, I say, I'll call it spiritual fulfillment. And then one other thing that you said they brought up with brought up in my mind is it's almost like if we look at our lives with a lot of honesty, it's the things we protect. It's our, we're protecting the Pepsi. We're protecting our beer. Like that's the thing that has like a hold over us. And it's not to, yeah, not to cast judgment, but it's 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 what we're protecting that is something that honestly there's a part of us that wants to be able to move past it, but our response is to like bring it closer, right? Yeah, it's that blanket. It's that it's yeah. that, and I I think it's it's true with with like with fat guys you know, being a, 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 as as a fat guy or as a you know I'm still heavy. I'm not I'm not at my perfect weight, but I'm a lot lighter than I used to be. Being fat is kind of your hockey. It's kind of it's a it's a it's a shield. It's a shield in a lot of ways. And losing that is almost traumatic. It really is. It's 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 a little traumatic on a level that like I mean, I I ice fish a lot and I go in a tree a lot when it's cold out, and I have to say that it's a challenge now to stay warm sometimes, you know what I mean? Um, but that's okay. You know what I mean? That's I don't have a problem with that. My wife is getting a little frustrated that I'm buying new hunting gear every year, and that's a, but that's okay too. Um, but, um, I don't think we, I think you really can't discount how affected we are by that kind of, like that, that, that thought it's pervasive. It stays in your head and, and it's, it's a comfort being heavy as, as much as it's this horrible thing, it's a comfort and we know it. We're comfortable with it. We know it. And being thin, especially for a guy like me who was heavy his whole life. Yeah. I don't know what it's like to be skinny. I don't know what it's like to be as thin as you are. I, I don't know if I'll ever. I mean, I'd like to try. I'm going to try, but I don't know what it's like. You know, I, I, I it scares the heck out of me in a lot of ways because I don't know what I don't know on all of the levels, on the spiritual level, on the physical level, on the mental level. I don't know. You know, there's all those things that you, that, that 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 come together that you don't. It's just it's it's the unknown. So it's the fear of the unknown in a lot of ways. And that's powerful it in is. keeping you right where you are and keeping the anchor out. And, and, and you know, you got to be willing to do it for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we all have our whys. And my, you know, my family is my whys. And, 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 but for me, I woke up one day and I was like, and my dad passed away about three years ago. He was a very heavy man. He was a big guy. He tried. He did it. He, he saw it. He was a factory worker. He worked his whole life in a factory. He was on his feet every single day. Um, he worked for his family. He made it, you know, he did the best he could to, to raise his family. He didn't know how to be thin. And, and he couldn't teach me how to be thin because he didn't know how to be thin. Yeah. And that's why you come in and you provide me with a path. You provide me with, with a blueprint on how to do this. And I think it seems so basic and it seems so, so, so it seems so obvious, but it's not. Yeah. Especially for, for people that are heavy that there is no path. They don't understand how to do it. And by, by providing that path and, and, and the support and the help and all aspects of it and saying, listen, it's 80% diet. So you can do this. Even if you're only, if you're only going to do the diet, if you're, if you're, if you're really hurting and you can't, you can work on some of that stuff, just try to do something and still do the diet. And you can still have success and you can still lose weight. You can still feel better. You can still move more and you can still uh, prolong your life. That's awesome. And that's, that's why I'm so grateful. And I think there's so many guys who are so grateful for, for your, for you and your, and your enthusiasm and your you know, program and bringing this to us and, and your persistence. Yes. Like I said, 
you're the most persistent. You're the most persistent guy I, 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 that's on my phone. I got to tell you, it's, and, and that's awesome. I mean, it is. It's I do awesome. Have, I, do have a, I do have a couple of things I do have to ask of you. I have one particular question before I sure. before this ends that I have to ask you. Then I don't know if anybody else got this problem, but I know you're you're probably not going to believe me, but I do have a request. Is there any way you can make the jar on the top of the fit on top of the super fuel the mouth bigger? Because I can't fit my hand inside of it. Yeah. I, hey. I, feedback received we can buy new bottles but you'd I mean, be I'm, I, I'm like a monkey with a with a salt thing and i, I, get, I get my hand in there and i get the oh god i can't get it out so it's bigger it's, bottle uh, it's, would you be open to a bag like no a ba- no i the love bottle? the bottle okay. the bottle's nice uh in fact i just got creatine and the, ba- the problem with the bag is is the same thing with the cacao you open the bag and the stupid zipper doesn't co- close back up again yeah. and you end up making a big mess no the bottle's awesome or Either make the the, the the top bigger or the handle on the thing longer. Oh yeah, something's got to change there. We, we got to get <laughs> okay. guy with the big with the big sausage fingers like me. Is, <laughs> it's really hard to go down in there. <laughs> okay, noted. We'll work on the geometry of the scoop lid <laughs> interface on Super Fuel. No, I, you know, I just I wanted to ask you. I've been wanting to ask you that for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, too, well, so. you'd be shocked. I mean, because there's like you know we're talking about the program side of this, but there's a whole like business side of Fitfather and like we're at kind of the whim of like the whole global supply chain when it comes to oh, like, sure. when it comes to like bottles and like that got messed up during 2020, 2021, as you can imagine. So it was like, no, was but like I don't have to imagine. Shortage of I run the biggest, I run the biggest fish hatchery in yeah. New York state. I, I buy things on a daily basis. I bet if, all the plastics, if you blew, if you, everything. We, we, yeah. we blew a pump. You buy, we, we blew pumps that they were just like, yeah, sorry, we don't have them. No, that's it. I mean, about, uh, the pandemic, when we were straight through the pandemic, I moved fish while I was in quarantine. We had, it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. And you know, I kind of wear it as a badge uh, because uh, with your help and with Camp's help and with everybody on the on the Fifth Pilot Project's help, I was able to lose 80 pounds and most of it was during a pandemic. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, it's just... That's just so awesome to be yeah. able to say, you know, and that I'm, I'm pretty darn proud of that. You know what I mean? Uh, that's really awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, so the other thing I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, don't get me wrong. I love you. I think you're awesome, obviously. Uh, but when we do a fit father, a fit father for life page, yeah. can you, can you not start every single thing by this is Dr. Dr. Anthony from the Fit Father Project, because we all know who you are. What do you we, want? We, okay, we, so we, like, okay. Just say, hey, it's Dr. Anthony. You don't have to say from the Fit Father Project. I got to tell you, and now, now we're also like be getting more into the behind the scenes. I have probably legitimately shot, because as you say, I'm a persistent kind of guy, like literally over a thousand videos, like maybe even <laughs> oh, more. Do you think I have a choice what I say at this point? It's like there's <laughs> burn scripts into my skull. I'm surprised I don't come home to my family you, and be like, wake up in the with night? my hands right here. Hey, it's Dr. Anthony. <laughs> like, cause there's like part of it is just like, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, it's like free throw. If like a basketball player has his warm up, like I <laughs> noted. I can see that. All right. I can see that. No, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I hear you. I mean, <laughs> it's like, my wife and I both go, oh, yeah. I'm just like, oh, boy, that's killer. That's tough. That had over and over and over again. I'm just like, that well, good is to know, tough. Good to know the burning, itching things. Like, I'll, I'll be more aware of that. Yeah. I'll, Sorry, I didn't mean to derail no, my, my interview. I, it's, I, I think people who listen this far will find this kind of hilarious, and that's also good. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, but no, it's uh, so many good things that in the, in the program, you know. And again, like I said before, I'm not the most perfect uh, uh specimen or, or, or you know what i mean I, I don't have the fitbit i don't track everything perfect yeah but i think that's the beauty of this and I, and I gotta believe that you had intended that to be that way or if you hadn't intended it to be that way you're glad it came out that way yeah that's so much res- so much so much results can happen it's not the typical you know keep you know counting every single carb you know i i you know and because again i've been kind of stuck in phase three i've been kind of just the back I'm, I'm doing a lot better now and so i'm I'm working really well towards that uh and but you know towards really my life is such that i i have a good week and i have a bad week because i'm up here for a week yeah and then i i'm at, for like seven days and so those seven days i'm doing great i'm by myself i'm I, no i have responsibilities at work but i don't have really that much family responsibilities besides doing the dishes or whatever, you know, cleaning the house. And then I go home and I got to go home and take care of the stuff that's at home that I haven't done it for two weeks. And I'm like, yeah, it's a big, it's a tough challenge. It's a big, a balance. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. For sure. 
and and with help with everybody's help and 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 assistance and uh, uh, support, like you said, the new guys can do it too. And uh, don't doubt yourself, fellas. You can do it, and it's a hell of a feeling when you do it. I'll tell you what. It's certainly awesome. is. But, I can you know, see you gain the respect of yeah. You, you can gain the respect of all the people that you, that you see, even if they don't tell you. They notice. They notice. My my wife has a, a an uncle who's a, a great guy. He's a, a, a retired Methodist minister, and he is he's the second most persistent guy on my phone besides you. I think I have eight million pictures that he sent me over the years. But anyway, he, he's just every time he sees me, he just kind of sneaks up behind me. He goes, you know, it really is remarkable. It just really is remarkable. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I've worked very hard to do this. You know what I mean? And uh, and so I, I wish for everyone to have an Uncle Paul that, that, that sneaks over and whispers in their ear. But if you don't find, if you don't have that guy, get a hold of me. I'll just bring your ear. I'll tell you how great you're doing. You're doing great. You know, it's like keep, everybody's got, just keep showing up and, and, and yeah, just doing something and working towards a like, goal. Oh, might not be the speed of everybody. You know, it's been said before. Don't compare yourself to somebody, somebody else. Just work on you, and look in the mirror and enjoy what you're with the transformation. And the hard, if you put, you know, even if you don't put in that hundred and ten percent, if you can, great. But if you can do what you can, do what you can, and you're going to see results. And that's as that's what it's all about. I mean, Tom, it's what 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 I mean. That's the capstone on all of this. That message was resounding through all your stories and. It's so cool now, now that I know that we can add your story as like a shingle of this continuing echo of like, you can do it up there with guys like Warner and like, I'm so proud of you. It is remarkable. I'm excited Thank for you. your next two years of enjoying your health and vitality. Then the life transitions that happen as you move into retirement. I mean, you set yourself up for so much success. I'm thinking back in this moment to your two friends that had a heart attack, let alone your dad, you're shifting generational patterns you're being an inspiration for so many of these guys. Like you're the man. Congratulations yes, on being a fit father. I'm so grateful to know you. I'm so grateful that I found you, that you found me, and for all your support and for all the people that are on the Fit Father Project. It's just, it's, uh, it was quite, it's, it is quite an experience. It is a truly a journey, and uh, I'm very grateful for it. So. Thanks, Tom.